Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this service. Uh, Lewis this morning is at Milton Abbas. And so the service will be led by myself and Jimmy. So before we start, we'll light a candle, or I will light a candle on our behalf to show the unity that we have with all in the benefice. So we'll start our service this morning with the opening words, please, Vivian. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We light these lights for the trinity of love. God above us, God beside us, God beneath us, God at our centre, God on the edge, God with us. We prepare a place for you. Come to us in the difference of every life gathered. Come to us in song. Come to us in word. Come to us in stillness. Come to us in flesh and blood. Reach out across time. Be present in all time. Come Jesus, be our guest. Stay with us, with friend, with stranger, with young and old, with the lost and found. Be amongst us today. Our guest, our host, the one who says, all are welcome here. So we start our service by hearing the hymn for the healing of the nations. Thank you very much to our singers. I don't think we give you enough credit for what you do for us each Sunday, singing live uh, unaccompanied. I'm awed by it. 
So we're going to go now to our time of confession, where we reflect on those things where we've let ourselves and let God down over the past week. Because the world is beautiful, but beauty is easily destroyed, we need you. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. Because we are weak and frail, because we cannot live without love, but often walk in darkness, we need you. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. Because we often abandon you and turn away and walk past and are afraid and countless times fall short of your goodness. But you love us to the end and win victory over all hatred. We need you. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. Because we have your message to proclaim, because we have you, your kingdom to build, because there are so many in need of your love, we need you. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And we have our collect for the fourth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, whose son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we'll go over to Hazel for our gospel reading. The gospel is taken according to John 10, verses 10 to 18. The good shepherd and his sheep. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that I may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for, what, for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. Praise to you, O oh Christ. Thank you, Hazel. We'll go over to Angie now for our reading from Colossians. Reading this morning is from Colossians 3, verses 1 to 7. Since you became alive again, so to speak, when Christ arose from the dead, now set your sights on the rich treasures and joys of heaven, where he sits beside God in the place of honour and power. Let heaven fill your thoughts. Don't spend your time worrying about things down here. You should have as little desire for this world 
as a dead person does. Your real life is in heaven with Christ and God. And when Christ, who is our real life, comes back again, you will shine with him and share in all his glories. Away then with sinful earthly things, deaden the evil desires lurking within you, have nothing to do with sexual sin, impurity, lust and shameful desires. Don't worship the good things of this life, for that is idolatry. God's terrible anger is upon those who do such things. You used to do them when your life was still a part of this world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And over to Jimmy now, who will uh, lead our talk. I chose that uh, passage from Colossians because it was originally set in the Old Book of Common Prayer for Easter Day. And it's very difficult to understand. Uh, and so I'm going to try to explain what it's all about. Lots of people think that being a Christian means having to do what you do not want. Keeping silly rules and being miserable because you've discovered you're a sinner. That's the impression the church often gives. That's a complete contrast to Jesus himself and most of the New Testament. Listen again to these bits from Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, what on earth? is Paul on about? Raised with Christ, we've not even died yet. Death is surely in the future. But Paul is not here talking about life after death. Just look a bit further in verse 2. He goes on to say, you have died, but we haven't, I'm still here. Paul is writing to people who are still alive. You don't write letters to dead people. Paul is talking about a new eternal life, life in the present. He's saying two things. You have died and you have been raised. What on earth is he on about? The clue is to be found in a little phrase which he uses quite often. Christians are people who are in Christ. If you are a Christian, you are in Christ. Can I explain it like this? I have here a Bible and I have here a card. And I put the card into the Bible. So now whatever happens to the Bible happens to the card. If I drop the Bible, the card goes with it. If I lift the Bible up, the card goes with it. What happens to the Bible happens to the card because it's in the Bible. They're united. And it's the same with us and Jesus. What happened to Jesus happens to his followers. Christ dies, his followers die in him. Christ is raised to life, his followers live in him. There's that prayer in the uh, communion service, the prayer of humble access, where we say that we may evermore live in him and he in us. Professor Van Buren likes it to being the body of Christ. Christ has set, him, set us in an indissolvable relation with himself so that we are bound to him. By the very closeness of this union, comparable with the unity between the body and its head, the death 
of part is the death of the whole. Only the head need die for the whole body to die. If the head be given life on behalf of the body, the whole body is on its way to life, even though full realization of this life may be delay delayed. But this is true as long as the body is in union with the head. So Christians are united with Christ in his body. So what does this mean for us if we are united to him? St Paul goes on to explain, first of all, look up. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. A lot of people thought the Duke of Edinburgh wasn't very interested in the spiritual side of life. The comments about him recently suggest that that is not the case. He took an intense interest in faith, although it was a questioning and sometimes radical faith. He realised that there is more to life than work, food, money and so on. If you focus just on the earthly things, you miss a whole dimension in life, the spiritual dimension. So St Paul says, look up. But then he goes on. Kill off. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, lust, greed, idolatry, malice, slander. And there's one other thing in my Bible here. There is a classic misprint, which I happen to notice. It's Hodder's version of the uh, New International Bible. And it says we should give up sexual immortality. Now, I wrote to Hodder's and inquired what this new sin was all about. I was quite interested. And they wrote back very piously and said they had corrected the mistake. That's what happens, you see, when you rely on computer spell checkers. Jesus gives us a completely different picture. The picture he gives is, I am the vine and you are the branches. A branch lives, provided it is in contact with the main trunk. Cut it off and the branch dies. <coughs> to live in Christ means that we are connected to him and we share his life. Father Thomas McDermott, a Roman Catholic priest, says, with the coming of Christ, God now abides, dwells or lives in us. And Jesus says much the same thing. John 14, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. We know, says Jesus, we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his Spirit. You are God's temple, says St. Paul and God's spirit dwells in you. When we first moved here 10 years ago, the top of our garden was a mess. You couldn't even get there. It was totally overgrown and we had to cut down before we got very far, two Leylandii and a mass of shrubbery. It kept the sun out. And much to our surprise, when we cut all that rubbish down, we found a garden seat. It's now been replanted and is becoming attractive and accessible. But it hasn't happened all at once. Killing off and replacing with new life takes a lifetime. There are two pictures in the Bible that help us to understand what it means to be in Christ. Picture, first one was the body, what happens to Jesus 
happens to us. And the second one, the vine and the branches, you need to be attached to Christ to keep up yourself spiritually alive. But I've recently come across a new picture which has disappeared. Here we are. No, I'm going to have to tell it from memory. C.S. Lewis suggests that uh, we are like a house and God comes to live in us in this house. And the first thing he does is fully expected. We uh, realize the roof needs repairing. We realize the drains need sorting out and that's done. But after he's been living in us for a while, he starts to make other improvements, which we find rather less convenient. Changes the room around. He paints it a different color. We're not sure we like it anymore. It makes us suspicious and uneasy and uncomfortable. But you see what God is doing, we thought he was going to make us a nice little cottage to live in comfortably. But he's not doing that. He's building a palace, a palace in which he himself is coming to dwell. It takes time, but if God changes your life, you'll be different. And sometimes that's difficult. Thank you, Jimmy. We uh, now come to our prayers where we affirm our faith in God. So let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. So let us pray. Holy God, your son remained with his disciples for 40 days after his resurrection teaching them to love all people as friends and neighbours. We too are his disciples, and we offer our prayers on behalf of the church, the world in which he, we live, and all those with whom we share it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray that all world leaders that using Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, as the ultimate model of leadership, that they would lead and care for their own flocks in such a way that peace might abound, righteousness flourish, and injustice be eradicated. As nations struggle with a pandemic, give government officials the ability to safely handle people arriving from other countries. Help people decide to stay at home instead of traveling needlessly. And while it may be heartbreaking, comfort families as they decide to keep their distance from elderly or other high risk family members. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, help us to reach out to strangers in our midst. As we remember the way that the early church lived in one heart and mind and shared everything they had, may we too in this benefice be always mindful of the needs of others less fortunate and always welcome the newcomer joyfully into our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who do not know your peace and for those who are struggling with their lives. We ask for your healing on those who are sick, your strength for those who are tired, and your love for those who live with despair and fear. 
We especially pray this morning for Nick, struggling with severe lung cancer, and for his wife and young family. We ask you to be with them at this time, Lord. And we continue to pray for Joan. And in a moment of quiet, we lift up to you those known to us in need of your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for those who now walk in the valley of the shadow of death. We know from the psalm that you are with them and have gone before them to prepare them a table overflowing with all good things. Guide those who are left behind in the paths of righteousness and uphold them in their sorrow and with the assurance of your goodness and love. Everlasting God, we ask that you would bless us here in the benefice with vision for the future and reverence for the past. Guide us each day as we minister to one another and to the world. Help us each day to bear witness to your name and to do your bidding, always mindful of your amazing love for us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So that takes us on to our notices. Uh, the next Zoom service will be at seven o'clock next Sunday evening. Soul Space will be taking place on Tuesday. And there have been some posters out about conversations that will be led on Zoom, which Lewis is encouraging us all to uh, pass the word on to anybody else who might be interested. So please do get others to join us for those Zoom sessions. They look really interesting. Thank you to everybody who's been in touch with me. I will be asking to say something in notices in a fortnight's time. So I think you'll understand what I'm saying. So that leads us now onto our offertory prayer. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this money to offer, the fruit of our labour and of the skills you have given us. Take us and our possessions to do your work in the world. Blessed be God forever. Amen. And we come to our final hymn which is the Lord's my shepherd.
righteousness, and he anoints my head with oil, and my cup it overflows with joy. I feast on his pure delight. And I will trust, I will in, trust, you, I will trust in you. And I will trust, I will in trust, you, I will trust in you. For your goodness, mercy follows me. Your goodness will be. Well, we go over to Jimmy now for our final blessing. I still haven't found the last bit of my talk, but never mind. Uh, I'll try to do better. And very soon I shall be back in a church and I shan't have to rely on a computer. You believe that Jesus has been raised from the dead in glory? You believe that you have been raised with Christ. May your hearts and minds be set on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.